Hello everybody, I'm meteorologist Hutch Johnson. Today we're going to take a look at some wild weather as we close out the month of April and head towards May. Now, it is not uncommon for this time of the year to see rounds of severe weather. And it is severe weather season, particularly in the central and southern plains. As things warm up down south and we stay cool up north, the clashing of air masses definitely can be a factor. We do have a chance of storms. We're going to highlight that for you. Now, we're all also going to talk a little bit about the fact that is winter over? <laughs> no, no way. In fact, there's some significant snow potential as we go through. We're going to go over all of it. And we're going to get started right now with a look at some model guidance. Now, a few of you have asked me, hey, Hutch, don't forget about Alaska. We're a state too. Darn skippy you are. Look at the storm systems that just roll off the Pacific, impacting parts of western uh, Alaska. The Aleutian chain with snow and terrible wind. Those systems tend to move through the North Pacific and make landfall into, well, North America, the lower 48. And as we see those storm system work their way through the Rockies, ah, they develop into some potent storms this time of the year as we see these air mashes of cold up north clash with the air masses down south. Let's talk a little bit about the time frame of concern with regards to severe weather. This all gets going as we go through your Thursday the 25th. That's the date that you see on your timestamp there. Thunderstorms forming all the way from portions of Texas uh, Oklahoma, Kansas, and into Missouri. They could be as far north as Des Moines, Iowa, as those storms will race into the overnight hours and afternoon hours off to the east. Now let's talk the 26, shall we? A repeat performance, but a shift to the east for the storms. Des Moines and Iowa, you need a lot of moisture. Drought-stricken areas there. And the showers and rain do look to be, well, much needed, but the threat will be there for all modes of severe weather once again. These storms will move off into places like Chicago and the Ohio River Valley, spread, spreading south into Arkansas, Memphis, and Tennessee. As we look off into the twenty, excuse me, the 27th, that will be your Saturday. And another round of storms form, but this time back out to the west we go. Des Moines, Iowa, Kansas, Missouri, and all the way down into Texas once again with another round of storms. And are you kidding me? Look at the snow out west. I'm going to reverse things here. Back we go. Showers of snow developing in the elevated terrain of Colorado and Wyoming as we head through the 25th. Again, that is Thursday. So while severe weather will be on the plains, you get up in nosebleed section in a mile high country, snow. And look at this. It's in Idaho. It's in Utah. It's in Montana and Wyoming. And it sits there for a couple of days. And then it moves into the plains here where we could see some significant snow in the panhandle of, you guessed it, Nebraska. You ain't done yet. No, nor is the Black Hills, according to this. So we'll take a look at some of the facts with regards to this storm in just a second. But I do want to highlight our risk for severe weather and where that is, according to the experts at the Storm Prediction Center. So to do that, I'm going to load that up right now. And we're going to take a look at the outlooks for severe weather when we get out towards day four. So when we go out to day four, we're talking, of course, about Thursday here. And let's take a look at where the Storm Prediction Center experts have that risk uh, showing up. Now, here we go. Forecast from the Storm Prediction Center shows this narrow area of potential for stormy weather from central Kansas through central and western parts of Oklahoma and into north Texas. Now, when we shift this into the next day, and by the way, we will have a chance for all modes of severe weather here, but primarily a lot of hail and gusty straight line winds. There will be some shear in the atmosphere as well as we go through, but it's a little too early to diagnose all of the possible threats. And in fact, to me, the shear looks to be a little bit more pronounced as we get into the next couple of days. So let's get right to it. Storm Prediction Center then, as we carry it through day four and move into day five, here are the areas of concern there. Now, this is not broken down into the individual threats here, but again, as we showed you on the model, Des Moines, Iowa, eastern portions of Nebraska, Kansas, and Oklahoma, all the way down into Dallas, Fort Worth, and Waco, Texas. And look at this, western Arkansas and most of Missouri, minus the boot hill having a risk of some storms that could be severe late in the week. Now, this looks like to me a better setup for some spin in the atmosphere as we go through the close of your work week. Now, let's take a look as we head into your weekend and we uh, jump over to day six. Yep, we still have another 
chance of severe weather, but it goes back and it reverses. This is a different wave moving through the central and southern Rockies, and it will bring all of Oklahoma, north Texas, and even southern Kansas a risk for some potent storms as well. So we'll take a look more in depth at this in just a second, but I would like to take this opportunity to Thank you for following Hutch Johnson here. Drop a comment in. Let me know where you're watching from. And of course, I love those likes. And please consider hitting the subscribe button. Now, let's take a look at some of this white weather that we were looking at off into the plains. And to do that, we're going to take a look at a model. And we'll look at the American model. And what we're going to look at in the, uh, excuse me, the national view here, I want to go ahead and, and rock this through. We're going to pay attention now to the chance of flaky blue stuff. There it is. Colorado getting a chance of this as we head into your forecast period on Friday, and that lasts into Saturday. And look at it spread through Idaho, Montana. Oh, we're talking about... Uh well, also Wyoming and straight down into Utah, Nevada and the mountains of California. All right. The snow out west will continue. And uh, as that low pressure system, a second wave makes its way through and it could get heavy, folks, as we go into Saturday night and Sunday in the Rocky Mountains of Wyoming and Colorado in particular and heavy showers of rain and storms. Now, notice these thunderstorms forming on the plains. Definitely some spin and shear in the atmosphere there with a setup like this, the way it looks to hutch. So, uh, Definitely some snow in the forecast. Now let's take a look at the precipitation potential with that as uh, we go through the wintry weather pattern. I am not concerned with the specific amounts that these models show up, but I am more concerned and, and focusing on the aerial coverage of the snow. So this is as we go through the weekend, Sunday, Monday, and look at that. It spreads into the panhandle of Nebraska, the Black Hills of South Dakota, Wyoming, and Colorado in the elevated terrain, and of course, the, uh, the Pacific Northwest and the elevated terrain in uh, the state of Washington and Oregon, all having a decent chance at picking up some significant snowfall potential from these storms. Now, what about the liquid moisture as we go through the weekend and into early next week? Here is a look at the uh, amount of precipitation from these models as we go through. And the thunderstorms, of course, wherever they roam, we will have some soggy conditions. And when you look at this, Oklahoma, Arkansas, uh, Central and, well, most of Missouri, and even Iowa, where we do need some moisture badly, have a shot. The Northern Plains picking up a chance for some much-needed moisture as well, maybe helping with some drought conditions there, and certainly helping with setting the stage for some better spring planting conditions. And the moisture out west will spread from the coastal areas where we'll get rain to the elevated terrain where it will mix with and change over to snow. So we certainly have that mix of all modes of potential weather as we go through the weekend and close out the month of uh, April and head into the month of May. So we're going to turn off our uh, uh, forecast outlooks from the Storm Prediction Center. And now we're going to take a look at another model output here. And that is going to be with regards to the spin in the atmosphere and the potential for these to make some uh, rotation and other factors necessary for severe weather as we head into the week. And then we'll wrap this up. So to look at that, one thing you can do is uh, kind of consider that there are these things that we can calculate the ingredients we need for severe weather. Weather. Severe weather re in the form of summer severe weather, we require those thunderstorms. And we're going to have opportunities on a daily basis once we get toward the latter portion of the week. And as such, when we get the rising motion of air, that doesn't always mean we get monster hail. It doesn't always mean we get rotation and spin or damaging straight line winds. Only about 2% of all severe thunderstorms or all thunderstorms become severe. So I'll repeat that. Only about 2% of thunderstorms ever even become severe. So the risk isn't all that great, but we are noticing that some of these ingredients for the severe weather are indeed coming together as we head into the middle to latter portion of this week. So here we go. And on the models here, we're going to take a look at this model once again that goes out that far. Let me change one variable here, and we're going to take a look at some of the um, ingredients needed to create what are called supercell thunderstorms. So Hutch, what's a supercell thunderstorm? I'll explain that while I show you a picture of what you're seeing here. Now, the model guidance is just that, it's guidance. And what it's doing is it's calculating out in the future where we'll have the ingredients necessary to see some stout thunderstorm activity. And look at this, it begins on the 25th. Supercells are storms that can have a life cycle of their own. The ordinary thunderstorm lasting only a few minutes, really, when you think, 
right down to it. 30 minutes to an hour, the average lifespan of an ordinary garden variety thunderstorm. To have a supercell storm, they create their own environment in a sense, and sometimes their own rotation, a mini warm front, a mini cold front, and a little bit of large-scale spin. That doesn't mean a tornado in every supercell. Supercells are oftentimes storms that can last through the night. And how that happens is we get flow out of the Gulf of Mexico elevated off the ground in what we call a low-level jet. And those low-level jets can feed that warm conveyor belt of moisture into these storms all night long. So even when we lose the heating of the day that is the sun, we get that opportunity to see these storms continue through the overnight hours. Now, as we take a step in time, you'll see Kansas, central Kansas, western Kansas, a chance for supercell thunderstorm development as we go through the day on your Thursday and into Friday morning. That wanes, that energy wanes, but the storms will continue to work their way eastward. And oftentimes the main threat as we go through the deep part of the overnight is gusty straight line winds because the upsidence or oomph in the atmosphere to cause the lift kind of wanes. Here's that day five forecast. As we look into your Friday, notice storms forming in Arkansas. Notice, uh, let me move it up here, even Iowa and Missouri out there into western parts of Kansas as well. These storms fuel and, and develop and will have that risk for some what looks to be a, a long line, linear storms. But the ones that form earlier in the afternoon oftentimes have a little bit higher potential. And look at the energy in the atmosphere in the Rio Grande Valley as we head into the afternoon of the 27th on your Saturday. So that's your weekend. But remember, there's going to be another chance as these storms rock their way and we work our way into your uh, Saturday. And here we go. Look at this. Oklahoma and Texas in particular, a dry line forms. And we noticed on the map showing the weather forecast that there's going to be a low pressure system right about here. So in the surface winds, we got the south and easterly winds wrapping back down and becoming northeasterly. Well, in the upper levels of the atmosphere, the wind's going to be blowing this way. And that, folks, is a change of direction of almost 180 degrees over a distance through our atmosphere as we go from the ground up. Just even looking at that on a simple map, you can see we're going to have some spin. We're going to have some rolling tubes of air, if you will, in the atmosphere. We get rolling tubes of air and an updraft from thunderstorms. And those rolling tubes can be oriented toward the ground. Perfect ingredients for supercellular thunderstorms. So that's a little weather lesson for today. As we've covered these storms that we're expecting to impact the central plains with the potential for severe weather Thursday, Friday, and Saturday, just make sure you have your information handy with wherever you get your severe weather information from. Review your severe weather plans for all modes of severe weather, from hail and flooding rains to even possibility for wind damage and even tornadoes. And keep in mind, hail could be a threat too with these systems. And look at the snow in the mountains of Colorado. So if you're traveling through the mountains to head anywhere, keep in mind that travel could be impacted by the weather. Again, I'm meteorologist Hutch Johnson. I love looking at the weather. I love playing guitar and I love my old classic cars. You can find out a little bit more about me by checking out some of my other short videos right here on Hutch's weather. But until then, I love your likes. I love your subscriptions and thank you so very much. Drop your comments or questions in the comments section.